<laughs> Good evening, all of you. Namaste. Uh, thank you for a wonderful opportunity, sir. Very, Eric, sir. Uh, I was very fortunate enough to take part in the Chennai first. And now, on this first Monday of this month, particular May 2021. Though my story is mythological, I am connecting a uh, little bit to the Corona, present Corona. Indirectly, you can give all, think of a suitable title other than whatever I gave, Damru. So my name is Nagishara. I am hailing from Hyderabad. I am basically a teacher. Uh, if you permit me, I will start. The name of the story is Damru, according to me. You all, after listening, you can give a suitable title according to your opinion. I don't feel anything bad about it. And you can give suggestions for improvement. Thank you, Mr. Rick, for uh, giving a third opportunity or fourth opportunity. This is. Thank you so much. Shall I begin? Yeah. It goes like this. Once upon a time, the king of gods, uh, we call it as Indra, the god of angry, with the farmers. For some reason, the reason is and decided not to reign for 12 years. Actually, farmers are the backbone of a country or any country, right? So without they grow anything, we can't eat food daily. So now you people, will, you means not you all people, we all not be able to harvest for 12 years. All the farmers worried and pray together to Indra for rain. So he has no mercy. He said, if Lord Shankar will play his drum, Damru, it will rain. It may rain. Then Indra told the farmers these remedies. This is a one remedy, actually. They have their own other ways, but whether they get it or not, we don't know. But the secret of talk, he heard Lord Shiva not to agree with the farmers. He went and met him secretly and told him, don't accept whatever they ask because you are very bold, very kind, very uh, sympathetic towards any people, whoever comes and prays to you. So the farmers reached to Lord Shankar after Indra met him secretly. And God said to him, them, the drum will ring only after 12 years like a little bit harshly. The drum will bring only after 12 years. Such a way, he said, but he's not harsh. So farmers were very disappointed and they decided not to farm for 12 years. That means indirectly it shows the laziness. One of them was a farmer who did not stop doing all this work, this job of doing farming. Because we know there are alternatives like a well, or a river water, some other water, other waters, right? So he was regularly doing the work of plowing the field and condemning all kind of sowing the seeds. Total work, every day he goes morning early and comes back home and takes the food. The farmers of the village started making fun of him, laughed at him such a way that what a foolish man. So God already said there will be no 12 years, no rain for 12 years. Damru will not blow, right? Will not rain. So the farmers of the village continued that. After a few years, the villagers started asking him, hardworking farmer, when you know very clearly, obvious it is that it is not going to rain for 12 years. How dare you, you are doing, or are you a foolish? Are you, why are you wasting your time and energy? Oh, the farmer said, he replied like this. I know, very coolly, he didn't react to the words of the, all the people, all the other farmers. I know that the crop is not coming for 12 years, but I am doing this work for the sake of my practice. If I don't do practice, practice makes perfect, you know? So 
I may forget after some time how to do farming also. The 12 years I can't be lazy. So let me do whether it rains or not, whether God will shower the blessings of rain on us or not. So after doing nothing, I will not gain anything. If I do something, I'll get an exercise. And at the same time, if my work is fruitful, I will enjoy the fruits of it. I will forget the work of farming. So I am doing it. So whatever you want to say, please comment. That's why I'm doing this. They laughed at him and went again. Later on, what happened? Mother Parvati was also listening to these all logical statements from Indra to Shankar, Shankar to farmers and farmers to farmers. All these she was watching from the top and Bhole Baba got worried. After listening to this story, words and all the narration to see his drums playing or not, he picked up the drum because she requested a husband, Shankar, Lord Shankar. So, he started trying to play it. As soon as the rain started in the Domru, Baja, the farmer who was working regularly in his farm, his field got a lot of crops after a few days. The rest of the farmers could not do anything because they didn't practice, they didn't do anything. They left it like that. Like a COVID, how they made us all confined to the homes, right? Uh, <clears throat> not do anything except just only whatever the food they have and all kind of nonsense, talking, sleeping, other work, but which will not yield any food. So the practice makes perfect. That is the main advantage taken by this farmer alone, one single farmer, is a formula to sustain the quality of work and practice is the secret to any kinds of hazards we can come across. So keep practicing, like the saw said uh, <clears throat> from Chennai, wear the mask, maintain distance, SMS, sanitizing, mask, and social distancing, all three. So after two weeks, two months, two years, whatever the time, it will go, as ma'am said, also said, corona will go, but we should be careful. We should not go to the crowds. We should wash our hands. We should follow our cleanliness measures. Then we'll be all right. All will survive. But the reality, whatever it lies in the hands of Almighty, so that is going to happen. Next, from this we can learn that, oh, whether it is pandemic or there is no rain, farmers or teachers or workers in a family or software person, whatever job it is, they have to do their work continuously without feeling bored. Entertain for one hour, maximum one and a half hour. Rest of the life will be very fruitful. This is how when Parvati requested, the Dambru started, then rain started, then crop yielded, the farmer was very happy and he distributed whatever extra from him to all the other people. They congratulated him and they all enjoyed and they never give it up or forgiving that uh, kind of farming practice and all kind of things. So agriculture, latest agricultural development have come, right? Whether it is modern or ancient, whatever it is, they have to do the farming if they are confined to be the goal maker of the farmer or some other job. So challenge, with efficient capacity, corona or whatever pandemic, every 100 years it is coming, it seems. Some people, they're narrating stories. So what kind of, not only the success story, we have to teach to the children and all the other people, the failure also, how to overcome the failure, how to come up well in the life. Then they come up very well in the life and they can face any kind of hazards like this. And they remain, successful and they live the happy life. That's all. Thank you so much. Eric, you have to unmute your mic. 
I apologize. Uh, yes, we have uh, still 23 people in the meeting, but only about seven of us have their cameras turned on. So you other 16, please feel free to, uh, if you wanna say anything, you can, you can say something even with your camera turned off. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about, about the story we just heard? Ah, Pandirajan, you have to turn your mic on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. See, uh, Mr. Nageshwar Rao was uh, saying the practice, that is what he was highlighting. And how he is going to come uh, relating the Damru. I think Damru is more, uh, we can relate it, the Damru. I, I, we have to think on those lines because he has given the name to Damru to that story. And anyway, the practice, that is what. Your, you can give your own title. That's what the task no, I have given you. Never mind, never mind. You know what I am saying? Are you saying the practice is important for uh, corona uh, prevention? That's what are you saying? No, sir, yes. Yeah, that is what you are highlighting. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's all. Mm -hmm. The mythology to the present the scenario, connectivity. See, if you help uh, so many people, they feel happy. Lifelong, they... Uh, I tell you, that so and so person has helped me. I overcame. They, he supplied cylinder. He supplied medicine. He has sent me from my place, this place to my native place. This kind of charity help will forever they remember. They'll never forget. So what all possible we can do? Just like Sonu Sud, you might have heard in the news and watched in the. So all are talking about Sonu Sud. Why? Why he started charity? Because his own passion. That is his passion. It doesn't mean that he's a foolish man. He's kind enough to spend the money and help everybody in need. That's all. I am not able to do it, but he is able to do it. Excellent. Wonderful. That is. Very Some good. people say you have to do donate secretly. So whatever you do, do it. Whether you are, when you are doing good, you can do wonderfully whatever way you like. But good. don't tell others to do the same way. Let them do their own way, unique way. Everybody is unique in the world. Okay, thank you very much. And Rupa, I have to apologize to you. We're, we're half an hour behind schedule. But um, anyway, we're here and, and we're, we're recording. So, so many people will also see and hear the recording. You are in California, right? Yes, I, I am in California. I'm not an early bird, but I'm glad to be here. And I look forward, some of my friends and relatives have come. So thank you for coming. And it's good to see uh, other storytellers uh, who know me and I know them. So can I start? Please. Before people drop off, I know it's getting late in India. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, Vanakam, greetings. The only good mouse is a dead mouse, proclaimed the deputy Australian PM recently. And I don't blame him for saying that because after all, they are going through a mouse plague in Eastern Australia. And he is obviously very annoyed and trying to get rid of a whole bunch of mice. But I have a different take on it because I grew up as a Hindu in India where we have a real soft spot for the mouse. The little mouse or the mushika in Sanskrit, who is the vahana or vehicle of our beloved God, Ganesha, the one with the elephant face, a long trunk, flapping ears, the God who removes all obstacles and who has a very big following. Well, it goes back to the story that there was a musician god who got cursed by a wise man or a sage and got transformed into a large mouse. He was so destructive that Ganesha had to step in, rein him in and make him his vehicle of choice or the mushika, vahana, yes. We often see images of Ganesha with this mouse 
reverently sitting by his foot, partaking in the offerings given to him, and also giving Ganesha a ride, Ganesha balancing on his little back. Well, there is the other story too that we love to tell at the museum, that one day Ganesha was busy welcoming all his worshippers, listening to their problems. They would bring him offerings of laddus and modaks. Ganesha kept eating that all day long. And by the evening, he was so full, his tummy was large, he was very sleepy as well. And he sat on the mouse, his vehicle, and they started heading home. It was a night with a full moon. And it is said those days, every night was a full moon night. And as they went, a snake got in their way. And the snake caused the mouse to lose his balance. Ganesha fell off. He rolled down a slope. And his tummy popped open and all the goodies started rolling out, all the sweets that he had eaten. Well, the moon was looking from above and was highly amused. The moon started laughing at him. Ha 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 The laughter echoing through the night. Kanesha, who is normally very mild-tempered, got annoyed. So he quickly broke his tusk and he flung it at the moon. The moon went absolutely dark. So dark that everyone went into a panic and the gods appealed to Ganesha. Ganesha wanted to teach the moon a lesson. So he came up with a plan to release a little light every night. So came about the waxing and waning of the moon, according to Hindu mythology. Well, how can I be angry with the mouse? The beloved vehicle of Ganesha, so much part of our mythology. But there is the theory that the mushika or the vehicle could also have be a larger rodent. Yes, like the bandicoot, but I beg to differ because as a young child growing up in Chennai, I encountered some bandicoots. They used to live in the backyard of my grandmother's home and they, I think, were somewhere deep beneath the swaying banana trees over there. They would come at night and a few of the pesky ones would squeeze through my grandma's back grill and make their way to her pantry. And soon grandma would notice that her big gunny sacks with grains and peanuts coming from the village would have been tampered with and grain would be lying all over. Grandma stood behind her door one night and watched in horror as the bandicoots were helping themselves. She tried chasing them with her big broom, but they kept coming back. So she got two large traps made and she set them, but she also made her favorite snack, vades or fritters, very popular in South India, made of chickpeas, onions, and all kinds of herbs and spices. We kids loved them and couldn't stop eating them, but granny saved a few to suspend in those mouse or bandicoot traps. And soon the bandicoots could not resist them and they greedily grabbed them and fell into the traps. And I recall that they were squealing like crazy while granny stood triumphantly so happy over her victory. She got them dispensed far away. And for a few years, they never came back. Well, the other theory is that the mushika could also refer to the smaller cousin of the bandicoot, the rat. Well, 
I am not a fan of that theory either. Because to me, rats are ultimately dirty and nasty pets. Pests, rather. <laughs> they are also more cunning than the bandicoots. Because when Granny tried the same fritters and the trap for them, they would grab the fritters and make an escape and come back again to wreak havoc. And I also recall the story that my mom told me about a rat encounter she had when she was just four years old. Turns out she and some cousins were sleeping on mats after a big family wedding on a hot summer night. And a rat actually climbed on top of her and bit her foot. Can you believe that? Well, to this day, she bears a scar of that 80 years later. So how can I forgive the rat for harming a child like that? And it is certainly not Ganesha's Vahana. Well, I thought I had left all these tropical pests behind, bandicoots, rats, etc. When I moved to this country, the US, about four decades ago. Not true. About a dozen years ago, when I was living in a large neighborhood behind security gates, in a pristine country club kind of a setting, some pests invaded my home. Yes, every night I would hear the strangest noises coming from behind my kitchen walls going and it would keep me up all night long. I would go with the flashlight looking for holes, for evidence and could not find anything. It was the biggest mystery. Well, one morning when I opened my very secret pantry drawer where I had kept all the goodies from India from my recent trip, like these spice powders, like fritters, like wafers, I noticed that the thick plastic bags they came in had been eaten through and everything was lying scattered there along with the dreaded droppings. Ew, I knew I had to do something about it. I set a spring trap with cheese. I was not going to waste my time making fritters, but the cheese disappeared and nothing was in the trap. Well, the next night I saw a long tail disappear under my fridge. And there I set a sticky trap. The next morning I saw this. There was a gray bald rat with a long tail and pinkish undertones stuck like this on the trap, half dead. And it was just wagging its tail very gently. My daughters, being the compassionate souls, wanted me to try and release this, but how could I release it from that sticky mess? I said, rest in peace, and I dropped this behind my slope knowing that it would make a good lunch for some hungry bird. Well, what can I say today? There is this mouse plague happening in Australia and the mice have lost their respect. They are being destroyed and mass with all kinds of very potent toxins. But unfortunately, that may also impact the other nature. It may start killing birds, may get into the food. It, you know, it's going to be totally devastating. So all I can do today is appeal to the remover of obstacles. Of course, Ganesha. Well, Ganesha, I know the mouse is very special to you and you have been inseparable with your mushika. So please intervene, listen to us and grant us some relief from this. 
I know you can do it. Find a way where the mice can live in harmony with nature and can get elevated again to a divine status. So Ganesha, you know, you can do this. After all, the Mushika Vahana is your vehicle of choice. Thank you. Namaste. Very well told, Rupa. Yes, thank you very much. So much. <laughs> it was a wonderful blending of uh, mythology and personal experience. Yeah. Very well told, Rupa. Thoroughly enjoyed the story. Thank you. Loved the story and your narration, Rupa. As, <laughs> as always. <laughs> thank you. Eric, can I, can I say? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Rupaji, uh, really wonderful. Uh, your remembrance of with mouse was wonderful. You know, everyone has uh, experience in, uh, especially those who have uh, lived there at least 30, 40 years back. We used to live with mouse. You know, mouse used to visit us. And as you said that the trap, the wooden trap, we used to have that. As you said that these uh, clever mouse uh, enter there and take eat the vada or whatever eatable you put it. And also bend the, uh, some of the iron uh, stick that is uh, protected to keep it, and they escape. They are so clever. They know that they have such a beautiful and uh, this. Is, and uh, you are worrying about the mouse. Mouse, mouse should be brought back or something. You should get a new way of incarnation. Should be there. Yes, it was that. Unfortunately, um, maybe up ten years back, I think everyone was holding a mouse in their hand. Haven't you seen that? Everyone, mouse, where is the mouse? Where is the mouse? That was whenever you uh, said so desktop and uh, that laptop, they were everyone using the mouse. The mouse. <laughs> That's so clever. It was so respectable and we, we were living with mouse. Now, you know, again, the mouse, that mouse also has gone. That is a pity. It has to find another form to come back. Yes. Another incarnation. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, but see, when I was not having use of that mouse, once I went to tell a story, a sub story with lion and mouse, I took this mouse and put one wire behind it and used the mouse when I was explaining the story to the kids. Oh, great. Thank so you. Thank you, for, thank you for all your kind remarks. And uh, it's been such a pleasure telling, especially to my hometown Chennai audience. My mother is here, the one who got bitten by the rat. <laughs> so, uh, ma hi, Ma. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's been great uh, going back and, you know, uh, digging into my past and coming. Lavanya, La did you want to say something? Yeah. Lavanya uh, Shinivas? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, uh, Rupa. It's so wonderful to see you once again. And uh, such a uh, heartening uh, story it was, the way, uh, and uh, your clever use of your hands and the lovely expressions uh, it was really, really nice. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to see you and listen to you. In fact, I waited till the end for your story. And uh, Renu, of course, I'm trying to you know, wind up everything. Pandirajan, I was listening to all the stories. Thank you, Eric, for this wonderful uh, um, you know, time that you've been giving every month on Mondays. And Rupa, I like the way you kind of brought the mythology there and your own uh, you know, life right now in the U.S. and your childhood here and how, uh, you know, mice meant what they meant to you. And uh, yes, superb, lovely each one of you. And I would like to see your mother, if you don't mind. Uh, you said she is there because... Yeah, my mother is Kokila. I mean, she's not, she doesn't have a camera on, but that's my mother. Okay, Kokila. Okay, okay. namaste, yeah. auntie. So yeah. wonderful to... Have heard also as an audience. Uh, Rainu, did you want to say something? Yes, yes. Rupa, that was a wonderful story. I think I've heard at least four or five stories from you. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know, Mushika is also my favorite. Anisha is my <laughs> absolute favorite girl. And in fact, I've named my dog Mushika. After oh, how nice. <laughs> and we do have a mouse visiting us very often. In fact, my husband <laughs> put, up, put up that wooden trap. And because we don't believe in using those sticky traps or whatever, because it's a very sad way to die. And this, uh, as soon as the mouse got caught, started squealing, 
my husband are feeling so sad. We went and released it the back in the back of, I mean, the empty plot behind the house. And uh, so I thoroughly enjoyed the story. I mean, the whole mouse thing. Yeah. And, you know, I really am very fond of mice. They're so cute. Yeah. Tiny things. I know, right? You can't imagine they're, they're being so destructive in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> but they have, I mean, they have to live. And I think it's the climate change. Climate change has brought that up, you know, yeah. Ex excess crops. And so they are multiplying. I mean, well, you can't really blame them. You know? Definitely. <laughs> so. Definitely not. Yeah. 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 Rupa, and, I wanted, Rupa, I wanted to say that Walt Disney made the mice really uh, yep. lovable with Mickey Very Mouse good. and Minnie Mouse. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So delight and and uh, Howard, your story was really, you know, heart touching and such a poignant story to us. And the way there is something in your voice that was kind of tugging at our hearts, you know, very um, absolutely uh, soothing. So soothing and something more than just soothing as well. There was something that was uh, beckoning, you know, there's something that was calling out to be heard. To be, it was a wonderful. Uh, I don't know if it was an intentional use of the voice or you're naturally blessed with that, but it did make a very good impact. You know, yes. you know, as a storyteller, it's very important to use one's voice. Thank you, and I just want to say, Rupa, um, that was a wonderful story, and um, your expressions, and like like yeah. your, I said, your use of your hands. Um, it really yeah. it puts me in the story with you. Um, and I admire you because I'm tired and it's 10 o'clock, 1030 here in California. You must be tired. It's, so no, it's early. early in the morning for us. So <laughs> I, I'm glad I got a little bit of time. You know? so, thank you, Howard. You are the expert, like you're the guru. So coming from you, uh, I really appreciate these kind remarks. <laughs> and, and, and I would just want to thank you, now. Eric, Eric, for... for for doing all this, um, yes. you're a, you're an inspiration to all of us. Thank um, you very much. I'm gonna Eric, I'm gonna turn off the recording.